Hey guys, welcome to another C++ in game tutorial. Today we're going to be going over static member variables and functions. And first let me show you just a little example of why we might need it. So I've made a iomanager.h and an iomanager.cpp. So I made an iomanager class and this stands for input output manager. So what I'm doing with this class is I'm making a, a class that will handle all of our, you know, reading and writing operations to the files. It's basically going to give us some extra functionality. So every time we want to like write something to a file, we don't have to make ourselves an of stream or whatever. We can just call a simple function in IO Manager. You'll want to make lots of classes in your game for lots of different systems so that whenever you want to write some more code that does something, there's a good chance you've already got a class that'll uh, make the job easier for you. So right now, IO Manager has nothing but a constructor and a destructor. Uh, now what I'm going to do is make a function to append text to file. So this is different than just writing text to a file. Normally when you open a file with an upstream and write to it, you're going to delete everything that's already in the file. With the append uh, uh, specifier, what we can do is write to the end of the file without deleting its contents. So let's make a function, and I'm going to make it an integer function. It's going to return an error code with this integer. So I'm going to write integer, write to, or append to file, append to file, and we're going to pass in a string, um, string file name, like that. So let's go ahead and include string at the top here, string, and I'm going to do using namespace std. All right, and then we're going to go to, uh, and actually, instead of using namespace std, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say std colon colon string. This is actually uh, a more widely accepted way to do it. It does the same thing. Uh, what using namespace std says is it says that uh, whenever you see, for instance, string, just assume it's part of the standard library. This uh, makes it so that we are explicitly telling our compiler that string belongs to the standard library. And this is just better practice because eventually you might be including a bunch more namespaces and it can get kind of ugly if you're uh, including namespace std at the top. So Let's go into IO Manager and let's make our little function. I'm going to just copy this right here, and we're going to copy this like that. So we need of stream. So let's include of stream. Include of stream. Oh, sorry, f stream. It has of stream and if stream. And we're going to make an of stream file, and in the constructor, we're going to put the file name, and we're going to put a comma, and then we're going to do uh, and we have to do std of stream, I believe. We're going to do std colon colon ios base colon colon app. And that stands for append. And if you're wondering how I figured out this, well, all I had to do is Google uh, of stream. And I looked at the constructor and it told me uh, what to do. So there's this, uh, remember documentation, you can look all this up online. The app uh, ios base lets you append to your file. So this will open it up in append mode and we're, let's go ahead and say if file.fail and we're going to return one for error and at the end we're going to return zero meaning it was successful. Okay so that'll return one and then let's go ahead and just uh, oh we have to pass in what we want to write so let's pass in uh, std string uh, data so that's the data we want to write to the file string data and then we're going to just say file data and then that's it we're going to return zero and remember uh, the destructor for of stream will close the file for you so you don't have to call file.close all right so now let's use it in our main function i've already included io manager so let's make an io manager io manager io manager and then we're going to say io manager dot append to file and let's say test file dot text and let's append hello world like that and a new line so let's run it and see if it works and you can see i have using namespace std here i'm going to get rid of that all right and so it should have appended something and we have std cn here all right, so let's go ahead and open it up real quick. Uh, open folder in File Explorer. Here's testfile.txt. And I'm going to run it again, and we should get two hello worlds. It should not overwrite the contents. All right, so now I have the folder open along with a bunch of other stuff. And let's go ahead and edit. And there we go. Hello world, hello world. So our append program is working. Now, 
The only problem with what we did is we have to create an instance of this class in order to call append to file. Uh, but maybe we don't want to do this. If we know we only want one IO manager, uh, then it's kind of weird that we have to always make a new IO manager every time we want to append to file anywhere else in our program. Now we could go the dirty route and put like a global IO manager uh, in IO manager and then we could use this IO manager, but you don't want to do that. So what you can do is if you only want to have one, uh, basically one IO manager in your whole program and you want anybody to be able to use it as long as they include IO manager and you don't want them to have to make an instance of the class you can use static member functions now a normal member function like this is attached to an instance of a class so when we make this IO manager up here when we make IO manager IO manager this append to file is part of that class when we call append to file we have to have an instance However, what we can do is put the static keyword right there. That's all we got to do. And now we can do it this way, but we don't have to do it this way anymore. Now we don't have to have an instance of the class. What we can do is instead of saying iomanager.append to file, we can say the class name iomanager colon colon, remember this is the scope resolution operator, append to file. So we just directly call the function and we of course have to say that this function belongs to iomanager, otherwise it won't know what append to file we're talking about. And now this is gonna work exactly the same. So when we run it, we should get uh, a hello world in our little file. It's, where did I put it? Here we go. I have way too much stuff open. And yeah, now we have three hello worlds. So that's what a static class is. It's whenever somebody says a static class, what they mean is a class that has only static member functions and variables. Uh, so what we can do is since we're making this into a static class, is we don't need a constructor or a destructor anymore. Because remember, a constructor and a destructor run when you make an instance of a class. But if we have only static functions in here, then we're not going to ever be making an instance. Now you can have both static uh, function or static functions and non-static functions. You can do it both ways, uh, but this is a static class, so it's only going to have static functions. Now we can also do variables. So we're going to make a public variable, and we're going to say uh, uh, this is kind of useless, but we're going to say like uh, a cd string last file name. For, for whatever reason, maybe we want to remember what the last file name we opened was, or something like that. Well, right now, this isn't a static variable. It's an instance variable. So if we tried to go into append to file, let's go there. So this is a static function. If we tried to say, uh, for instance, after we open the file, if we wanted to say, what did I call it? Uh, last file name, file name equals file name. This is not going to work. It's going to give us an error. It's going to say a non-static member reference must be relative to a specific object. That sounds a little confusing, but what that's saying is that this is a non-static reference, meaning this is a non-static uh, variable because we didn't put static in front of it. And this is a static function. And a non-static variable has to be attached to an instance of a class. But if we go here, You'll, you'll see we didn't make an IO manager, right? We just called append to file. So we never made a variable, so it never called any constructor that might initialize this variable or create this variable or allocate memory for this variable. So we can't use that variable at all. If we want to use this variable in a static function, we have to make it a static variable. And when we make it a static variable, it's no longer going to be attached to an instance of the class. So if you were to make instances of this class, they would all share the same static variables. So let's go ahead and say static. Now, when we make a static variable, there's one more additional step we have to do. Uh, this is sort of like a little, you could think of it as a forward declaration. We have to actually define it again in iomanager.cpp up here at the top, and I deleted these so we don't have those anymore. We have to define it again. Uh, we have to say uh, the variable name and we have to say who it belongs to. So iomanager colon colon last file name. And it's a good idea to initialize it here. We can actually initialize it. So I'm going to say uh, equals uh, the empty string. So right now the last file name was nothing because we didn't have a last file. And there you go. That's how you do uh, static member variables. So whenever you have static functions or static variables in a class, that doesn't make it a static class. It's only a static class if everything inside is static. Uh, you can mix and match if you want to. It, it doesn't really matter. And even though this is a static class, we can still make an instance of it, IO Manager. But 
uh, this doesn't really mean much at all because there's nothing in an instance. Like when we create an instance, there's no instance variables. This last file name is not attached to the instance. It's not a member of the instance's memory because it's static. It's basically like a global variable almost, except it's not a global variable because it's inside IO Manager. But yeah, static can be really useful for your systems where you only want to have basically one class uh, that can be used anywhere in your program and you don't want your people to have to be able to, or you don't want them to have to create an IO manager. Now, if you want to have multiple IO managers, say maybe you want to have one IO manager that manages something and one IO manager that manages another, then you probably won't want to use a static class. But probably for the majority of use cases, you, you could just use a static class for this. And there's a lot of other things you could use static classes for and static functions and static variables. Uh, so there, there may be some certain uh, classes that are non-static but could have a static variable in there for some reason that, that would be really useful. Like perhaps if you had um, a class that, uh, I don't know, needed some kind of uh, global information, uh, you could do that with static variables instead of global variables. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, in the next few videos, we'll be going over enums. And uh, we might do, actually, I don't think we'll do templates. I think we should just jump into graphics. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.